Hey Math 31, I had a question coming out of section 3.6, number nine, and here we were asked to find intercepts of this function. Now just taking a look at this function, if I was thinking about graphing it in terms of stretches and shifts and things like that, let's just specify where this is going. Like I can see because there was a minus three inside the grouping symbols, I'm gonna shift right by three units. I can see because this plus four is outside the grouping symbols, I'm gonna shift up by four units. And then because of this four here, I'm gonna stretch vertically by a factor of four. So keep in mind our basic absolute value function, our toolkit function looks something like this, right? It's a V. So we want you to imagine that I'm gonna go three units, right? One, two, three, maybe that's not the best color to use. Let me go with a, a green so we can see it. So I'm gonna go three units, right? and I'm gonna go four units up, right? And that will be my vertex instead of the origin, and it's gonna be a lot skinnier because I've vertically stretched it. So I have an idea at least of what the graph looks like. And if I look at that graph, and let me go ahead and just make that graph over here kind of all by itself, because I wanna just get an idea. Let me go one, two, three, one, two, three, four, and I'll fill that in with green. Right, it looks something like this. There's my skinny V. And just looking at it, eventually I know that this, this side here, that'll cross the Y axis, but I want you to just take a, I say cross the Y axis because then I'll know there's a Y intercept. But I, I'm just looking at this, there are no X intercepts. So just graphically, I say, okay, there's no X intercepts. And let's go see how this plays out algebraically. All right, so now that we have the graph side of things behind us, let's do the algebra. All right, so whenever I wanna find an x-intercept, I set my function equal to zero. So my function in this case is four times the absolute value of x minus three. So I'm gonna work through that. So if I want four times the absolute value of x minus three, so that's not the best absolute value symbol, four times the absolute value of x minus three plus four, if I wanna set that equal to zero, I subtract four from both sides. Right? Then I want to isolate the absolute value term, so I divide by 4, and I get that the absolute value of x minus 3 is equal to negative 1. Now, I can see from here that there's no solution. All right? And the reason I can see that is, is because I've worked with absolute values enough, and I know that whenever I have an absolute value that's equal to a negative number, there's not going to be any solutions, because absolute values can't be negative. But let's say you didn't see that. Right? And you were like, okay, let me solve the absolute value equation. Well, that goes back to section 2.6, and that's where we would set up two equations. We would let x minus 3 equal negative 1, or we would let x minus 3 equal positive 1. Oops. Right? And if I solve these, I'm going to get x equaling 2 here and x equaling 4. And you might say, okay, there are my two equations or my two solutions. I'm going to write them up as x intercepts. But what you have to remember to do is you have to take these two numbers and plug them back into the original equation and see if they hold. And let's just do that for a moment. I'm gonna try x equaling two. So if I did four times the absolute value of two minus three plus four, is that equal to zero? Well, the absolute value of two minus three, or I should just say two minus three is negative one. So I have four times the absolute value of negative one plus four, is that equal to zero? Well, the absolute value of negative one, I'm just I'm right here, that's positive one. Four times one is four. 4 plus 4 is 8, and 8 does not equal 0, this did not work. And if you run through and try it with x equaling 4, that will also not work. And that's the algebra way to see there are no x-intercepts. But again, I saw that on the graph. If you know what your toolkit functions look like, and if you don't remember, toolkit functions, they're on page 187. We should know those general shapes. That's a big part of uh, pre-calc or college algebra. All right, now the y-intercept, I always find y-intercepts easier. All you have to do is let x equal zero. That's easier, in my opinion, to do. So then I'm plugging in zero for the function, right? Zero minus three is negative three. The absolute value of negative three is three. Four times three is 12. 12 plus four is 16, and there's my y-intercept. And that's why I couldn't really see it. If I wanna go back to the graph over here, uh, let me extend the green, right? This this would have hit all the way up eventually at 0, 16. And that's why I couldn't see it because I was just sketching the graph. I didn't have the entire x and y axis graphed out. All right, so no x-intercepts, y-intercept 0, 16. And you could have done this on your calculator as well. If you plug this into your y equals, you could have used the second 
and the trace button because when you do second and trace you really call up that calc menu item and you could have done um, one which would give you a value and you could use that to get the y-intercept or you could do option two to get you zeros right and that would get you x-intercept so again just for fun let me color code this if you do value that would get you and excuse me I did that wrong that would get you you could get a y-intercept here and that would be if you plugged in x equaling zero and if you do the zeros you can get an x-intercept so your calculator can also find all of this for you all right thanks so much everyone bye